So if you own one of the modern consoles for this gaming generation, either the PS5 or the Xbox Series X, you've probably noticed that it is getting harder and harder and harder to find physical copies of games, whether it be in stores, retailers, etc. Those of you that know me from Twitch probably wouldn't assume that I have much of a modern game collection, and that is a probably a fair assumption considering most of what I stream on Twitch. I do not have an Xbox Series X, although I am kind of considering getting one at this point. I do have a PS5 and I've had it since the summer of 2022. I've really enjoyed the time that I've spent with it, even though admittedly it hasn't been a whole lot. I'm sure it would probably surprise some people to learn that I do have over 30 games for my PS5. And I'm not talking PS4 releases that play on the PS5. I'm talking games that actually have that sweet PS5 banner. These are games meant for and designed for play on the PS5 only, and they will only play on that system. Why is it that 30 something games sounds like a lot for this generation? Cause I've talked to others and the thought of having that many games is a head scratcher for a lot of people. And it blows my mind that a console almost four years in can have that kind of reaction. So I've come up with a few different reasons that I personally think have really driven this trend. Obviously we know this is happening, but why exactly is it happening? That's what we want to talk about today. So let's get into it. Probably the biggest reason and the one we need to get out of the way right at the get here is the fact, the simple truth, really, that Microsoft and Sony really want to push their subscription-based models. And that is how, really, they've decided they want to distribute the majority of their games to their customers, right? Obviously, with Microsoft, we have Game Pass, and that is really the gold standard for how to do a subscription-based service right now. I think regardless of how you feel about either platform, it's safe to say Microsoft is getting the W on this. Just the amount of games on offer, the variety, the vast expansiveness of the library and the titles on offer. You know, Sony also has an interesting assortment of games across various platforms, right? Across generations of their hardware. They've got some interesting stuff on there, but Microsoft is really killing it for that reason, really, especially when it comes to Xbox owners. It's not uncommon to talk to people that don't own any physical games for their newest Xbox. They just use their console as a Game Pass machine and and that's it. And they're totally content with that. You know, same thing with Sony. I'm sure there's lots of people that own a PS5 that haven't really bought any games for it because they've decided, hey, listen, I play multiplayer. They've got this subscription service. I'm going to have to pay for it anyway. I'm just going to play the games that are on there, right? Why buy a PS5 copy of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire when they have Wheel of Fortune on PlayStation Plus Premium, right? You're itching to play a game show. It's like, well, that's already on there. I'm already paying for it. It's included with the service. Why would I buy this physical copy? And I think that's a big reason as to why we're not seeing as many physical games anymore. Another reason it's hard to build a collection on your modern console is the fact that there aren't really that many true proper exclusives that are only available on that platform. Now, obviously, Microsoft is kind of doing their own thing with the Xbox line of systems. They're kind of trying to build this larger ecosystem where the vast majority of games will play on pretty wildly different iterations of hardware, right? There are very few games that are are branded as Xbox Series X compatible only. There are very few. They do exist, but the vast majority of games are being released in such a way that pretty much they can be played on quite a few different iterations of hardware. And I kind of like the approach, but it does mean that it's hard to get games that are really like considered new and exciting for your brand new system. Obviously, Sony has taken a bit of a different approach. They're doing kind of the more traditional release method where PS5 games do get their own branding. The downside of that is you can buy a PS4 version and it will upgrade to the PS5 version. But if you buy the PS5 version, right, it doesn't go the other way. So you can't play a PS5 game on your PS4. For me, that's not a big deal because I didn't own a PS4. So I've been kind of playing catch up. Any game that's got both releases, I'll just buy the PS5. But I've got a few examples like, right, we have Atari 50th, the anniversary celebration here. In this case, literally, this has the PS5 branding, right? And the PS5 banner at the top. This cannot be played on a PS4, but this game also got a PS4 release that would be playable in a PS5. Yeah, Sony is kind of doing the traditional thing. We're still getting games that release across both and it like doesn't really matter that the PS5 version exists, right? I've got a couple other examples that I do happen to have on PS4. We've got Battle and Wonder World here. This did get a PS5 release. I happen to have the PS4 version. It'll play in a PS5. It's not really a big deal, but you see what I mean? Like we have these games that really 
can be played on either one. Man Eater here, same situation. This can play on a PS5. You might even get a PS5 upgrade patch if you put it in your new console, but the PS4 version also exists. There aren't that many true exclusives, which does make it harder to build a collection. Another reason it's getting really hard to buy physical games is just the fact that brick and mortar retail stores themselves are kind of dying. I don't know if you've been into a Target or a Best Buy recently. It is sad. These are like husks of shells of what they used to be. Obviously, there's a whole host of reasons as to why that is. In fact, some of the reasons that we've stated earlier for why it's so hard to get these games play into that. The fact that people are subscribing to get their games, getting them digitally, etc., buying, you know, on Amazon, right? That has kind of killed brick and mortar stores. But yeah, you can't just like walk into a Best Buy anymore and grab a PS5 game. It's getting harder to do that kind of thing. That's just the world we live in. In fact, I've got an example of a game that I pre-ordered from Best Buy last year. This was a uh, Robocop Rogue City for the PS5. I absolutely loved this game. This is one of my favorite modern games that I've played in the last couple years. Absolute joy to play this one. This was a game that I pre-ordered from Best Best Buy. I think this may have been like the only copy they had, or at least the last one they had when I ordered it. They said there was only one in stock. I have no idea how many were allocated to that store and they had it behind the counter anyway. I could not have gone into the aisles to get this game. It's like they were trying to make sure that I didn't go back there. I think they almost felt embarrassed that their selection looked the way they did because as soon as I walked in the store, they had a greeter. They put me in the cashier line and I got my game. Basically, brick and mortar is kind of dying and yet another reason that it's so hard to get physical games nowadays. And the last reason I want to touch on in this video here really is the fact that a lot of games are just unfinished on release for lack of a better way of putting it. I mean, we're just being blunt here, right? Also the fact that things end up being like codes in a box, right? A lot of publishers don't see the value necessarily in putting time, putting resources, putting effort, putting money into printing these physical editions when the games might not be finished on release. They might get considerably patched as things go along, right? Maybe they're a live service game anyway. They're an online multiplayer focused game anyway. If you need to be connected to the internet, there isn't really much of a reason to own said game physically when the game could look very different a few years down the road from how it initially released. And then also, like I said, codes in a box, later editions, getting content. I've actually got an example here. This is a game I haven't played yet, but I am really looking forward to playing it. This is Mortal Kombat 11 Ultimate. And the reason I bring this one up is because I actually learned, yes, the game on the disc is the game. You do get the full proper game, at least as it initially released, but all the DLC and characters and extras like that, the thing that makes this game like the ultimate version, it's a code in the box. I think that's part of the reason we're also seeing publishers not really take as much time and care and effort into releasing physical versions because so many games get DLC, so many games get patches, games aren't really finished even when they release anymore. It makes people question why bother with the physical version. So that'll do it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I am really curious to hear your guys' opinions on this. Obviously, I am a physical media lover, even though I don't play a ton of modern games, which is a whole topic for another video. I am going to support physical media for as long as I can. I will buy the releases I am interested in because I do believe in the practice of physical media. It's obviously something I love. I've dedicated a lot of time and a lot of passion and a lot of energy to this hobby. And I want to see games still get modern physical releases. So I will be buying buying them when I can. That being said, it has gotten a lot harder, right? You got to put that work in. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care, everybody. And until next time, have a good one. I told you it's not ready yet. Honey, just show it to them. <laughs> Yo, what's up? Poofy haired Kyle here, and today I have 10 of the wackiest, craziest. Oh my god, son, that's wonderful. My collection. These have all been streamed on my Twitch channel. This is beautiful.